Hi everyone, my name is Mohit and I'm one of the co-organizers of the Alpha Challenge at the Embodied AI Workshop. And I'm very excited to announce the winners of this challenge. We had uh, six participants uh, and there's been some amazing progress on the leaderboard. And today we'll be showcasing two of the top submissions and their approaches. Uh, but before that, let me give you a quick overview of the Alpha Challenge. The Alfred dataset is set inside the AI2 Thor simulator, which involves rich object interactions inside 3D household environments. The dataset contains 25,000 human annotated instructions to achieve various goals by interacting with rendered scenes. Each annotation contains both a high level goal, like put the green bottle in the cabinet under the sink, as well as low level step by step instructions, like carry the green bottle to the first sink on the left. Here's another example from the dataset. The tasks in Alfred are an amalgamation of various challenges in embodied AI, like following navigation instructions inside partially observable indoor environments, or grounding rich referring expressions that sometimes require understanding spatial relationships. Most tasks take around 50 low-level steps to be achieved, so the long horizon nature of these tasks poses a particularly difficult challenge for agents. In addition, agents also have to generate a dense pixel-wise mask to indicate which object they want to interact with. Some of these interactions are also irreversible, so you can't unslice an apple or unclean a mug. Together with these challenges, Alfred brings agents closer to the real-world difficulties of embodied interactions. For this challenge, an agent was evaluated based on its ability to follow language instructions in both seen and unseen rooms. The top scoring submissions were ranked according to the best success rate that was achieved in unseen rooms. With that, now let's get to the winners of the Alfred Challenge 2021. In first place, we have Hierarchical Language Conditions Spatial Model by Waltz Blukas, Chris Paxton, Dieter Fox, Animesh Gark, and Yova Artsy. This submission achieved an unseen success rate of 16.3%. And here's Waltz explaining how it works. We introduce a hierarchical approach for solving long horizon tasks specified with high level natural language instructions. Our approach takes as input only the high level instructions in RGB images, and it does not use the detailed step by step instructions in Alfred. Our approach consists of an observation model, a high-level policy, and a low-level policy. At each time step, the observation model takes as input the RGB image and constructs a spatial world state representation in the form of a semantic 3D voxel map that's visualized here in the center. Each voxel in the semantic map represents a region in space and encodes the classes of objects contained within that voxel. The semantic map captures the agent's understanding of the physical world around it. The high-level policy then takes as input the semantic map and the natural language instruction and predicts the next high-level sub-goal. The low-level policy takes as input the semantic map and the high-level sub-goal and predicts the next action to be executed by the agent. The high-level policy is a neural network and the low-level policy consists of a combination of learned and hand-coded skills. This is a visualization of our model solving the task, secure two disks in the bedroom safe, showing the input RGB image, the predicted depth and segmentation, and the semantic voxel map. The agent here is shown as a black pillar, and the object of the sub-goal is going to be shown in bright yellow. That's the object that the agent intends to interact with. Now, now the agent first starts by looking for the CD and successfully picking it up, and then it's, roam, it's roaming around and exploring the environment looking for the safe. It eventually finds the safe and successfully manages to open it, put in the CD and close the safe, and now it needs to look for the second CD. It has imagined that there's a CD here on the ground, which there isn't, and so the agent tries to approach that CD to pick it up, but it fails. Now it's still looking for that other CD, 
and it's made its way back to the safe thinking that there's a CD to be picked up there. It's trying a couple of times, but eventually it realizes that there is not a CD to be picked up, and so it keeps roaming around looking for the CD, and eventually finds the second CD on the table, and now it's bringing it to the safe. It's gonna, the agent tries to open the safe, but it's blocking the door, so the safe cannot open. So now the agent retries from a different position, opens the safe, puts in the CD, and completes the task. Coming in at a close second place, we have The Agent with the Big Picture by Byung-hee Kim, Suwash Bambri, Kunal Pratap Singh, Ruzba Motagi, and jong Hyun Choi. This submission achieved an unseen success rate of 15.4%. And here is Byung Hui explaining how it works. Hi, I'm Byung Hui. We benchmark our model on Alfred and we focus on two aspects the limited field of view of the agent and different semantics required for task completion. For the limited field of view, the agent takes the egocentric observation as input, but this view is relatively small. And this small field of view often limits the agent's understanding of an environment, and this could lead the agent to poor performance. So we use surrounding views by gathering additional observations from navigable directions to enlarge the field of view of the agent. As illustrated in the figure, the agent takes the surrounding views from the navigable directions, including the egocentric view, and our model jointly uses the multiple visual features. For the different semantics for the task completion, while action prediction requires global semantic cues, object localization needs a pixel level understanding of the environment. Because they are semantically different, we factorize the action prediction and object localization in separate branches, and we call them policy and percep perception branch, respectively. For each branch, we combine individual components that address the bottlenecks of various aspects. In the perception branch, we encode the language instruction, ground vision and language features, and predict masks using our object-centered localization method. Instead of directly predicting the mask, our object-centered localization predicts the target class and retrieves the mask instances of that class from a pre-trained mask generator. And in the policy branch, we encode the language instructions, ground vision and language features, and predict the sequence of actions. In addition, we propose a mechanism in an action policy branch to avoid unanticipated obstruction during inference time. Now, going back to the challenge, what are some key takeaways? It seems like end-to-end -end learning with egocentric vision, especially in interactive environments, is still pretty hard. Trying to learn everything from sequences of raw RGB observations does not generalize well, especially to unseen scenes. So we saw a lot of submissions that made use of some strong semantic priors. These priors were trained inside training scenes to predict things like segmentation, depth, or in posts. We saw that the winning submission made use of all these three priors uh, to make an agent that generalizes pretty well to unseen scenes. We also saw a number of submissions that made use of hierarchical and modular approaches. In hierarchical models, there was a high-level module that predicted what the agent should do, and there was a low-level module that figured out how to execute that high-level action. Similarly, in modular approaches, um, the action and the perception part were compartmentalized, and this seemed to make a huge difference. With that, I would like to thank all the participants who submitted their models to the challenge. And I would like to thank our sponsors, Amazon Science. And I look forward to seeing you at the workshop.